Hey everyone, Ender here from the Digital Storm Forums. Today I'm going to give you a quick run through on using Prime95 and Linux to do temperature and stability testing for your system. First off, I'll say anytime you do any kind of stress testing or benchmarking, you need to watch your core temperatures. Now, there's two main programs to do that with. I'll show you both of them. First one is Core Temp, and the second one is Real Temp. Um, Real Temp is definitely the more commonly suggested one, but I prefer Core Temp. I'll show you why here in a second. Both of these are going to give you the same basic information. You have a live readout of your core temperatures here. And what we care the most about, which will be the highest reading of any individual core here. Now with Core Temp, there's a cool feature where you can go to Options and Overheat Protection. Bring up this window here. Now with this, it'll let you choose a maximum temperature that if your core, if any of your cores reach this temperature, it'll automatically perform an action. Um, in my case, I have it set to turn the computer off after exactly 10 seconds of meeting that temperature. That way, if I'm here watching the test, so I'll have plenty of time to turn it off and you know shut everything down without having my computer restart on me. Or if I'm not here, then it still shuts down. Hopefully, with a small enough window to not cause any kind of temperature damage. I'd personally suggest setting this to about 85, maybe even a little less than that. Um, you want to set it different, then that's pretty much on your own accord, but if anyone doesn't know what they're doing, I'd say 85 is a safe maximum temperature. Alright, so we got everything selected here. Go ahead and hit OK. Let's open up Prime95. Now as soon as you install and open Prime95, everything will already be chosen for you. You need to have the blend test selected and then the maximum amount of threads that your processor is capable of. Uh, for most of us, we're going to see 8 here. Now as long as you can see both of your core monitoring programs, then you're safe to go ahead and start the test. All you have to do is hit OK. Now as soon as the test starts, you're going to see a lot of these workers showing up and they're going to be doing their own little thing. The only thing that we really care about is you can see here that each of them will have its own little readout on how much time is spent on the test and if there are any errors or warnings. If any of these individual workers have any errors or any warnings, then you have problems. You need to either change your overclock settings if you're doing it on your own, or you need to post for help um, or contact Digital Storm directly. Any of these will show you a stability problem. It can happen um, 30 seconds in, it can happen 23 hours in, it doesn't matter when it is, system's not stable. And speaking of time, you do want to run this for a minimum of 12 hours to give you a real stability test. Obviously, overheat protection is a good thing to have because you don't want to babysit the test for 12 hours. Um, the recommended test, if you want to do stability testing on your own overclock, would be 24 hours. Obviously, again, the overheat protection comes in really handy there. I'll also say that you know Prime95 will definitely load your computer, but not beyond use. You can still use Internet Explorer. You can still do any kind of office work. Uh, I even use Photoshop sometimes. Obviously, it'll slow things down, but it doesn't handicap your system completely. All right, next we're going to move on to Linux. Basically, the same idea here. The only real difference is that Linux is sort of a quick and dirty version of what Prime95 does. Uh, you want to run anywhere between 25 and 50 passes to give yourself a temperature or stability test. Um, Linux is more useful for a quick and dirty stability test or a quick and dirty temperature test if you make changes or if you're, you know, you're just curious how things are. Um, as soon as you install Linux, it's the same deal. All you have to do is click all and that'll automatically choose your maximum problem size and your maximum memory available. And then you just click start and it'll run through however many times you selected, like I said, uh, 25 to 50. And then as soon as it's done, I'll give you an individual readout of how long each test took, uh, which isn't really that relevant. Basically, all we care about with this is that the system doesn't crash while it runs or have any kind of errors. And then we care about, obviously, looking at our maximum temperatures over here. Like you can see, for example, the maximum temperature that I hit during any of those tests was 68. I run both of these when I'm doing any kind of heavy testing and just go by the highest of whichever core on whichever program reads the highest. I figure that's the safest way to do it. Alright, so now that we have all this temperature information, we want to share that with 
either the forums if we're asking for help or we're working on an overclock or maybe we want to show off to our friends or whatever. Uh, we do need a little bit more information before we do that. So we're going to open two separate CPU Z windows. Okay, and we're going to set one of those. And we're going to leave one of them on the CPU tab, which is the first tab that will show up as soon as you open it. And the other one will move to the memory tab. This way we can see all your processor settings and your relevant RAM settings. To take a screenshot of this, just go down to your start over here and type in snipping. As soon as you open it, you'll be given a cross that you can draw a rectangle around anything that you want to take a picture of. So just go ahead and do that there. And it'll take a screenshot for you and put it in a separate window. So you can go ahead and hit save. And I'll just save it to the desktop. And then we're done with this. To upload this, I suggest using Image Shack. Uh, it's very simple, it's free. Uh, you don't have to sign up, there's no registration or usernames or any of that stuff. It's very simple. Um, you just click browse as soon as you get to the main page. Choose your image. And upload. As soon as the image is uploaded, we'll just go to where it says direct link. There's a lot of different ways here that you can use the hyperlink, but we really only care about direct link. As soon as you click in the text box, it'll go ahead and highlight everything for you. So all you need to do is hit control C and then come over here. We'll post in the technical assistance. And then just hit control V and there you go. There's your link. Uh, you can also use image tags which is just a sort of a neater way to link it. Uh, this will actually put the image in your actual post. Or you can also come up here and click on this little icon. It looks like it has a tree on it. And you highlight the HTTP that shows up there and paste your hyperlink. Click preview, which will show your image here and it'll unlock the OK button. And you can just press OK and your image is there. Uh, obviously you want to include any kind of relevant information like why you're showing this if you're just showing off or if you just want to see how your temperatures are looking um, any kind of questions you have just include them with your post and then you know throw it up uh, there's going to be a couple more videos in the series uh, you'll see some work with graphics cards and your hard drive and some other hardware so hope to see you around